はお座席番号中にご案内いたします本日はグローバルドメンバー日本航空をご利用いただきまして誠にありがとうございます Welcome back. When we left Nasibi, he had reached the goal of 1 million yen. As I stated last time, it doesn't get better for Nasibi. Well, perhaps briefly. I'll let you decide. Producer, t o j o You, you, Nasibi, the goal of the show can't get better. When the producer was a guy, he was a guy who was a guy who was a guy. ゴールを祝いクラッカーで祝福しかしナスビはなかなか気づいてくれない。At this point, I am completely fed up with this motherfucker. Why I draw the line at party poppers when someone is sleeping, I don't know, but damn it, I draw the line. Surely this must be as bad as it gets. But no. Producer, no, she's just going to suck. Now, on to the prize winnings. As promised, his clothes were returned to him. After spending a year nude, he says his clothes feel itchy and he promptly sheds them. Next, he is awarded a bowl of pork ramen. This topic will come up again later, you'll see. His third gift, Nasibi, is blindfolded, taken by car to the airport, and flown to. Mm. Korea. He did mention in his diary just how much he desired grilled meat, so they stoked him there. しかも、生まれて初めて食べる骨付きカルビにナスビもんぜつ They take him to an amusement park やっぱそうだ They buy him a large jar of kimchi Then they blindfold ナスビ again and well When I got off on the other side in Korea I took off the mask and they said Congratulations, you've achieved your $10,000. This is your reward. You get to have a trip in Korea. So I got to do a little sightseeing that day, and I thought, wow, that was a long thing. Boy, what I've been through. But then at the end of the day, they took me back to my room, and there was the exact same room set up in the exact same way. What the producer had done was recreate Nasibi's apartment, but in Korea. The rack of magazines, the table, the postcards. It was just as he had left it in Japan. Surprise, Nasibi, they told him. Now all you have to do is win your airfare back home. This was just like somebody had just pulled the floor out from under me and I just fell. I didn't know that humans could be that cruel. I lost all energy. It's like somebody had just sucked the life out of me. I didn't want to talk, I didn't want to breathe. I didn't want to move a muscle. I had reached the end. I was just. I was finished. I told the producer that I wouldn't do it. I refused. And we went back and forth for quite a while, actually. But in the end, kudos to his skill as a negotiator, 
I did give in and do the last section of it. But why, I can hear you, the viewer asking yourselves, asking Nasibi, why do it? I wondered too. Well, it was, I just got exhausted, if anything. I mean, he wasn't leaving. I couldn't just sort of get up and storm out. I had made no preparations for being in Korea. And so at the end, I just said, yeah, whatever. And so I continued. Take a look at this clip from the show. Nasibi definitely is not being portrayed as someone who is having trouble with this situation. And thus began Nasibi's second stretch of writing and entering contests, this time earning his way back to Japan. This took four months, and Nasibi remained a phenomenon the entire run. At one point, they attempted a 24-hour feed of Nasibi's apartment, but this required someone to be in charge of keeping Nasibi's privates covered by the floating eggplant in real time, and it was abandoned as it was just too difficult. After four months, when the airfare had been obtained, the producer again sneaks into his apartment. He blindfolds Nasibi and returns him to Japan. When Nasibi removes the blindfold and finds himself once again in a small apartment, he sighs. Instinctively, he removes his clothes. But then, shockingly, the four walls of his small apartment collapse outwardly. <laughs> Nasibi is in a Japanese television studio in front of a large audience who congratulate him on achieving his goal and winning sweepstakes life. He sits with the cushion covering his groin, blinking in the bright lights as the two TV show hosts approach him as though he were a frightened animal. お邪魔します。お邪魔します。お邪魔します。お邪魔します。お邪魔します。お邪魔します。お邪魔します。お邪魔します。お邪魔します。お邪魔します。お邪魔します。お邪魔します。お邪魔します。お邪魔します。お
That was used in a commercial. <laughs> Nasibi had been on the covers of magazines. And so I sat there realizing that this new sort of life was, you know, I was no longer just a nobody. The entire nation had been watching me for 15 months. And you know, to be honest, I thought, well, what the hell's, what is my country coming to? And I was, you know, very happy that my journey was not for nothing, but it's still weird. Nasibi did not come away from the experience without some emotional baggage, of course. He claims he had difficulty holding a conversation for the first six months afterwards. He felt uncomfortable wearing clothing for the first year. Saddest of all, perhaps, is that his part on Susanu Denpa Shonen didn't help his comedy career get the boost that he would have liked. The roles he would be offered in the following years would require him to be naked and goofy. It's amazing to hear him talk about the experience as if it were a study in Zen Buddhism. I don't want to overstate it, but it was kind of meditative in a way. I had time to think about a lot of stuff. After finishing that project, everything has been much easier. I see things happening, or I see situations around me, and I think, that's nothing like what I went through in that room. I came out of the whole thing, in a sense, with the very best possible results. A lot of people were not so fortunate. There were terrible things that happened related to that show. And he's right. There were other contestants in different show segments who, arguably, endured worse torment. None of them lasted as long as Nasibi. None became as famous. One of the contestants was made to hitchhike from South Africa to Denmark. He almost died of dehydration while going across the desert. Starvation was a recurring tactic to ratchet up the excitement and sense of urgency and the humor, I guess. The mastermind behind all of this was Tsuchiya Toshio. In the 90s, he was Japan's reigning king of reality programming. He was the one who would debate with Nasibi until Nasibi relented. 14 years after the sweepstakes life had aired, Tsuchiya called Nasibi. I had some, let's say, mixed feelings about him. A little resentment, maybe. Yeah, I kept my distance for a very long time. And then actually just last year he got in touch with me and apparently it sort of came to his attention that maybe he had put people through maybe more than they deserved. And so he invited me to dinner and he spent the evening sort of explaining why he did what he did and apologizing. I think we, yeah, I think we pretty much came to terms and I welcome the opportunity to work with him again, certainly. He wanted something that would move people. And you don't get that out of just sort of somebody playing around. He wanted to see something real. He wanted to pull miracles out of people. It was done for the purpose of getting a miracle on film. In an interview with NPR reporter Stephanie Fu, producer Tsuchiya Toshio confirmed that he met with Nasibi and was moved by what Nasibi had to say. At the same time, he wasn't sorry for any of it. I was enthralled by their struggle. I was thrilled by their personal struggles, so I was watching them succeed. I have no regrets about anything I did on that show. When asked if he apologized to Nasibi, he responded, Well, I put him through a lot. If you say that you have a sports team and you have a coach who runs his players through very difficult maneuvers, at the end of the day, he may pat him on the back and say, Hey, sorry for putting you through such a rough struggle. It wasn't me expressing that I shouldn't have done the project. The whole project was trying to reach at some very elemental, simple humanity. You see, Nasibi had been sort of brought to a state where he was in such an elemental part of his existence that he danced without realizing he had ever danced. And he danced on a regular basis. The modern individual is sort of shackled by convention and expectation and all these other things that we wear from day to day. And I wanted to see them drop some of that and see this simple humanity and then to see actual gratefulness. I don't know about you folks, but I cry bulls. And that's the story of Nasibi. It's pretty shocking, but not unique for Japan anyways. I should mention that years after the show aired, Nasibi actually climbed Mount Everest. I suppose when you've been as low as he had been, there's a desire to get as high as one can go. 
I appreciate you tuning in to one of the rare non TCAP videos I have made. I plan to do more going forward. I hope you folks will stay along for the ride. Now enjoy this montage of hilariously cruel Japanese TV shows as my growing list of supporters scrolls. Bless you all. I'll see you next time. Bye. Okay.